Alrighty then, it's time for a Warwick game, and let's just get very old school with this. And man, playing Warwick again, he's just hasn't changed. Which too, it's like it's, it's not really a, a good thing either. I mean, how long has his uh, rework been in uh, work? Like three years now. That's kind of sad, I think. Either way, he plays pretty much the same way as he always have, and you build them pretty much in any way that emulates him from before. So his masteries are 18, 12, and 0, seeing as they're the closest they can be to before, and his runes are pretty much as stagnant as ever, although he has, I mean, he was one of the few junglers who could be super creative with them. I'm using attack speed red, attack speed quints, armor yellow, and magic resistance blues, although Warwick was one of those champions who can easily just replace his yellows with something else, like health per level, and get movement speed quints, or whatever. And like, he's got one of those, you know, super sustains in which it doesn't really matter what he takes. So, either way, I took the standard just because it's a new season and I don't want to take too many fancy chances. So, either way, Warwick plays basically the same. You farm to level 6 and only try to gank anybody who seemingly put themselves in the position to easily die. Such as they push way too far, they're uh, tower diving, they decide to invade you and fight you for some reason, because you know you're not supposed to... Uh, 1v1 Warwick. Like here, unfortunately, I don't get the Katarina kill, but this is one of those instances where going all out trying to obtain it would have been fine. Either way, you just pretty much get to level 6, try to get your Devour Power Spike, and then have a nice day. In fact, right now I go home and I don't even buy my upgraded smite, I buy Boots of Mobility and the Hunter's Talisman, because I know I'm about to hit level 6 soon and I need this power spike, or I need to be able to at least get the opportunities that arise. Fortunately for me, the first gank is very, like, the dream, right? I don't have to initiate with my ultimate against an Alistair, thank fucking god. The Alistair and the Misfortune bottom lane, they... Uh, they counter initiate against my teammates, but by doing so burn their CC So that means I get to just basically walk up to misfortune and kill her and then use my ultimate to grab whoever might have survived In this case it was Alistair. So we get ourselves a nice double kill Unfortunately the Tristana failed to jump and got herself killed by Jarvan So it wasn't as clean as it could be, but still that's kind of the dream Warwick's ultimate is a really strong initiation tool for a gank def Definitely and you'll see me do that at times as well but, uh, I liked using it also as a sort of uh, the continuation of the chain of CCs because, come on, it's very long, deals pretty good damage considering what it's supposed to be doing, and it's very instantaneous. So you can surprise people with it, so, uh, you can make sure to counter some chain of abilities or whatever. So it, it's, it's a very simple tool. But its uses can be more versatile than some people give it credit for. Still though, in a lot of cases, like against the Echo or against the Katarina, using your ultimate as a burst initiation is a wise idea. You gotta decide who, how it's better. Uh, you know, against a, cha a combo champion, you might want to bait out his important abilities or the, the start of his important abilities and then jump them to just prevent it from using it. Uh, on a vital target that needs to die, you'll jump them basically immediately, or someone who has burst or a lot of means of it escapes, you want to just burst them down. Or sometimes you might even ult the tank just to prevent their CC. Like I've ulted a Mumus before when the enemy team is using, you know, other movement speed abilities and rushing towards you. I'll ult him just to CC him down and my teammates like a Lux or whatever, destroy the enemy team. In this case though, I got a little greedy. I'm kind of just trying to maximize my devour, so I went in for a kill. I knew I was going to die, but I didn't think I was going to die that quickly. I thought maybe we'd do something else. Either way, it was a mistake in the end. Nonetheless, devour is uh, Warwick's prime item. It like a lot of other champions have options of going Cinder Hulk to be tanky, uh, of going warrior in case you're going for an early game fight devour is so strong on warwick even if you don't evolve it that uh it's pretty much the must have item on him afterwards you can build any other item any other on hit item or even just flat out damage items uh, in any order or in any combination and it really won't matter but the devour is his must have 
And you guys know I rarely say kind of things like that. I always just try to say, you know, versatility on your jungle items and whatnot. But Warwick is pretty much no dice. And of course, a dueling smite on him is very strong as well. So that's the one I recommend, even more so than the, the slow smite or even the ranger's trailblazer on him. I mean, not the ranger's trailblazer, the one with the ward. I forgot what it's called. Either way, there's another hidden thing about Warwick. It's not exactly hidden, it's just not given as much credit as it should be that is exploding with value. Warwick's W gives immense amounts of gold value to his team. So if your composition is something like Tristana's or Jinx or Caitlyn's and champions that require attack speed of that sort, your W is disgustingly strong. Especially if you're trying to push towers, because Warwick himself, if he actually manages to get uh, safely on the tower, can take it out rather quickly. Uh, in Warwick, in those cases, can be an excellent pick. It's just usually in team compositions with uh, low early pressure, like, you know, safe, uh, sa unsafe laners. Let's say if you got yourself a a mid lane Lissandra, she's not exactly unsafe, but she's very easy to shut down by the combination of a jungler and a, a mid laner, or yeah, the laner and the jungler teaming up, it's very easy to kill her and stuff, or a Cassidy and Pre-6, something like a war may not be able to help them out if they need it, so if you have strong laners, like a lane Lee Sin or a victor and stuff then a warwick might be suitable for a team as long as your w is getting full value and your ultimate is able to be used successfully each moment i mean every cooldown instead of every now and then it's a very tough order for warwick uh, to find a team copy he's, ex uh, he's very perfect for which is what making makes him a very difficult champion to like uh balance i guess the thing is, for solo queue, I would actually recommend a Warwick, as long as you understand that there are some champions you should most definitely avoid. Like, if the enemy team has a uh, top Alistair, a Blitzcrank, a uh, some uh, Lee Sid and shit like that that just stops your ultimate or anything you can do, you probably should not pick Warwick. It's like, definitely not. But if you can read uh, team compositions and sort of gauge the effectiveness of Warwick in that game, then definitely, I would actually very much recommend Warwick. He can carry games really efficiently. It's like, uh, he's one of those champions, I would say, completely shuts down games. Uh, slowly, though, I might add up to that. It's like, you, there's very few champions that can do anything about his ultimate, or, or uh, survive the time frame that his ultimate permits, as long as it is done perfectly. So, if you can read the compositions, if you can uh, get the idea of when to use them, then perfect. It's just, uh, as simple as he might be, he does require quite a bit of jungle knowledge to pull off uh, consistently and effectively. In this game, in fact, I picked it because my last three games were very dismal. Even if I won them, they just weren't very effective to use for a video or anything, because they were very tame and whatnot. Warwick's always been my sort of go-to, I just kind of want to make sure my early game doesn't suck and then hopefully become effective. Like, there's no way to really shut down a Warwick except survive his ultimates and just watch him not get any money. Either way, uh, either way Warwick, I still hope he's, he gets his rework because for all intents and purposes, his he's really not a good ability. It's like just not a interactive ability and doesn't do much. His W for being so ridiculously valuable, its effectiveness and quote unquote, uh, the degree of value it exerts is very varied and never consistent. So, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta clear my throat. It's never, never very consistent. Like uh, only two people in my team actually make the attack speed really worthwhile that much. So the, the immense amount of quote unquote gold value I give off as Warwick is diminished on the champions such as Lux and Renekton. So you catch my drift. He needs more consistency. He needs a little bit more buttons to press. And his ultimate, sadly, will probably have to go or have at least some conditions attached to it of some kind. Because having a really long instantaneous crowd control can be really problematic. 
So I'm so I'm wondering what Warwick is going to receive in changes. It's been three years, and I think his might actually be next, or maybe Tarek, I don't know. So if you have any ideas as to what they can actually change in Warwick to make him better but keep his identity, I'd actually like to hear it in the comments below, because he's always been that old school guilty pleasure that he was the first jungler I devoted my time to learning. And I, back when you had you had to jungle starting off at red buff, and in order to do it without runes, you use that uh, that old summoner spell called Rally, and you use Smite. It was really, really uh, old school and brutal. Still, though, as you can see, once you get your items as Warwick, once you get your Sate to Devour, and just one other on hit item, you obliterate anyone you touch. Like right now, we kill the. Uh, we kill the misfortune. Katarina comes in right now and kills the kills the Lux. I just get on top of her and just start eviscerating her like in no time. She just implodes. Jarvan right now gets close too, and he basically gets diced in no time. It's like this is where Warwick at at this point. This is where Warwick gets crazy, and no one can one v one him. Not even the Trundle, which is insane a lot. So. The problem, of course, is if you get CC and knocked around, you're pretty easily kited. But still, you get my point. He's a very safe champion for winning mid-phase games or prolonged games. And as long as you've got teammates that are competent and know their own weaknesses as well, you should do at least okay as Warwick. Which is why he has a pretty good, damn strong, consistent, positive win rate despite being such a very uh, limited and old school champion. Either way, I do recommend him, and I hope you practice him, so hooray for work. This channel is supported by my sponsors, Crunchyroll, Pro Build Systems, and Loot Crate. Check out the description below for links to the websites. Signing up for any trials, including Crunchyroll's free anime trial, greatly supports my channel. Also remember to give the video a like to support the channel, and subscribe if you haven't yet.